I realize this risks being a wild generalization, but how do marketers define big data? I mean, do they really understand what it is? Not really. Okay. Um, big data for marketers is probably anything that they can't really picture. And uh, that's very hard for marketers. Right. Because marketers like to be able to picture what they're trying to uh, address, what they're trying to target. Um, I, I like to think of it as in math terms. Marketers don't, but I'll, I'll offer this up anyway. Sure. That uh, in math terms, it's like going from two and three dimensional calculus when you can picture the surface areas and the rates of change mm -hmm. and the volumes and draw it and graph it to end space right. where you can't do that. And end space is really where the action is. Right. Well, in marketing, finally, we're in end space. And it's really hard for the marketers. It's a big leap. It's this confusing realm, big data for them. And right. it's scary. That's a big sort of abstract leap, right? Yeah. Now, is it, uh, are marketers not digging deep enough into the data that they have at this point? Uh, they, they probably are in that manual sense. Um, they're, they keep looking for signs that match what they think their customer is. Again, the leap they're not taking is the leap to that abstract notion that you have to sort of let the machines take over. Mm. Again, a really hard leap for marketers. So going, they go really deep on the old ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. So they can go with more refined, uh, more precision on demographics, more precision on behaviors, purchase behaviors, uh, more precision on uh, attitudes. All that's happening, but abstracting that out a le level and saying, yeah, but let's, let's build machinery to actually consume that and so much more from the digital world is something they probably are not doing yet. So is this largely a mental shift rather than a tool set type of thing? Because the tool set, it sounds like it would come from the mental shift. Yeah, uh, it's it, it, honestly, it's a it's a big shift where the people who are going to be good at marketing in five years mm -hmm. are not the people who used to be good at marketing five years ago, and we're in that awkward transition. Coming out of that transition, what do you feel like are the tool sets and the skills that a successful marketer is going to need down the road? Um, it's a funny. Uh, 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 paradox, and, and it may be just a temporal paradox, and it is that the markers who are really good at statistics are, in fact, get not great ratings. This is a, this is a Harvard Business Review uh, s uh, article that ran uh, a month or two ago, and it's one, one I believe. I think it was well-researched, um, and I think they were judging uh, marketers' aptitude based on tenure in the job and success of product pretty good way to judge. Mm -hmm. So the ones that showed high aptitude for statistics, which you would expect to be the evolved state for marketers, actually were getting too micro-focused and weren't making good decisions. Really? That may be temporal, mm -hmm. and that may change over time. Um, we'll see. But the, the marketers who are able to ask the right questions of people who are very good with statistics and then make very good decisions based on that, the questions they asked, were the most successful marketers. Interesting. That may change. Right. It may be true that, and, and this was a particular study that looked at CMOs, so maybe that biased it, mm -hmm. uh, because you're talking about that top level executive at, at, at major marketing companies. Um, but in fact, aptitude and statistics and, mar and success at the senior level of, of marketing executives are not matching up well, well now. They may in the future, we'll see. Interesting. Last question for you. How do you feel that uh, qualitative signals, things like brand awareness, how are those going to be combined with big data? Or as a kind of adjacent question to that, is there no such thing as a qualitative signal anymore? Oh, they're very important qualitative okay. signals. Um, and, and yet they're, they're, uh, they're soft <laughs> by their very nature. Mm -hmm. It's the hard signals that, um, that the marketing community is being ever more drawn to and, and driven largely by the success of search marketing, right? So search marketing changed right. everything. It changed expectations. Uh, it was the bottom of the funnel effort sure. that right. has a very hard signal. They clicked, they went to the website, they took an action. It's all traceable. Mm -hmm. The problem is most marketing is not search marketing and most marketing is not that, that quantifiable. 
and is is and so we need good uh, qualitative signals. Um, we're at early stages of, of mastering how to mine those signals in a good way, in a way that's useful, in a way that is, uh, it draws us to, leads us to make the right decisions. In fact, there's probably an overcorrection the other way, which is there's too much attempt to assign hard signals, quantitative signals, to marketing efforts that are not going to show that way. Interesting. And how do we get around that? I mean, do well, you think is the, pe- I mean, is the pendulum just going pendulum. back and forth right it's now? It's a pendulum. And? Yeah, it's it's that you know we're trying to assign. Uh, the perfect example is we're evaluating advertising that is that happens in the digital domain, whether it's video advertising or display advertising. We're evaluating on clicks, right, or last touch, which are much more concrete events. Uh, again, clicks to conversion, last touch before a conversion. Those are two specific ways that we're, we're evaluating marketing efforts that end up being sometimes useful, more often misleading than useful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's a pendulum shift that probably has to come back the other way. Now, it, we need better qualitative signals to get there and more readily available qualitative signals. Um, that's, a, that's a big frontier for right. the marketing community. It's not a challenge that has not been met yet. Well, thank you for being with us. Appreciate you well, taking the time.